to make an actual presentation this morning. If we were to go back and look at what our text was for Mars and Hildy, we know that some of us really struggled with, number one, reading the directions that were on there, number two, understanding them, and the three, thinking creatively about it. So Mars and Hildy had some very specific instructions for us, correct? So I'm just going to review. They sent us a memo about it. Your presentation with the chamber is quickly approaching, and they are really nervous about this. You may need to go back and reread from your other job task, meaning job task one. What was the purpose of working with the Sierra Club? Go back to the pink sheet and read it. You might need to go back and say, oh, what are some of the different expeditions that we've made flyers for? I need to go back to job task number one or job task number four, four or one. Okay, so please make sure they really want you to know that you need to reread. It says right here, it's important to know that you might need to go back and reread some of the other information from the tasks, and I totally just changed that, okay? The slides, boys and girls. How many slides did Marvin Hildy say they wanted you to have? Two. Minimum of seven, maximum of 15, Jackson. So we want to make sure that we stay in there. If we look at these bullet points, so if I'm coming in here and I look at the bullet points right here, this is one slide, two slides, three, four, five, six, seven. Why would Marvin Hildy say we could have up to 15 then? So my bullet points that are on my task memo right here are seven. But Marvin Hildy said we could have up to 15, okay? Okay, some of the bullet points might take more than one. That's perfect. Sorry. What's the most amount of slides that they can use? 15. No, I mean like they can use the same amount of slides. I don't know. But in our case, we're only doing 7 to 15. Okay? Your presentation needs to be professional. I cannot stress this enough. No spelling mistakes. Proper capitalization. Good use of text features. No slide should be the exact same. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Okay, let's go through and talk about some of these. The title slide with logo, name, date, and the name of the chamber would just be boys and girls like, Today's date would be the date that we're technically doing the presentation, right? But we're not going to give it. You're going to give it randomly the rest of this week. Like, I'm going to call a kid up and you're going to give me your presentation. So you have to be ready to go at a moment's notice starting tomorrow morning. Is everybody clear on that? Okay. Background information on outdoor adventures. Boys and girls, this is... What is our business? What do we do? What do we offer? What do we sell? When it says no personal information, I do not want Marvin Hildy's name on there. I don't want Miss Dora's name on there. I don't want Joey's name. You are only making it about the business web. So we are just saying Outdoor Adventures is a store in Monaco, Wisconsin. It's located on and then we might give the address. Is everybody clear on that? So personal information is not saying like, it's owned by Marvin Hildy and they have three kids and two daughters. Their family lives in Orlando and they're not in Manaqua. That's personal information, Sam. We need to give very general, basic information. Examples of merchandise. Where could I find things that I sell in Outdoor Adventures that we've already given you, Drew. Job task number one has it, the overview sheet that I gave you, and the basic information sheet that's posted on Google Classroom. Specific
specifics on new expeditions offered. These are the trips that we have planned. So we could talk about the Boundary Waters trip. We could talk about the Apostle Islands trip. Those are the two trips that we have planned so far as outdoor adventure employees. We can't talk about anything else there yet, can we? No. Then, specifics on new expeditions offered. This is where your creativity, Webb, needs to come into account. So if I know that I'm an outdoor adventure company, I could say that we might design a ski trip to Colorado for our customers. I might say that we're going to do a canoe trip on the Wolf River in Wisconsin. You guys get where I'm going with it? You need to be creative. Marvin Hildy has said, hey, Go ahead and discuss other potential types of trips. Don't be afraid to have conversations with one another about outdoor trips. I might even say, hey, I'm going to offer a geocaching trip. If you don't know what geocaching is, it's like a scavenger hunt using compasses or GPS points. Go and Google some outdoor activities if you are so urban bound that your idea of an outdoor thing is walking on the sidewalk to the corner market. You understand my point? Okay. The partnership with the Sierra Club. Go back to job task one for this. Why do we want to work with the Sierra Club? Examples of expeditions offered. So this is where you might come here and say, here are ones that the Sierra Club has offered and why we are being similar. If I were to tell you this one right here and this one right here could actually be combined together to help you. Okay? Create a li wish list of how the Chamber can help outdoor adventures. A Chamber of Commerce is there to promote and protect businesses in the area. If you were to go and Google Muskego Chamber of Commerce, you would find that it exists. So I could go to my Chamber of Commerce and I could say, hey, we really want to help promote community. So um, myself and like four other businesses are going to suggest that on the first Friday of every month in the summer, we have jamming on Janesville. That's how that came to be with businesses in Muskego said, we've got road construction, our road construction is making our sales to go down. Could you as the Chamber of Commerce help us to develop something that could go on in Muskego that would bring people down to our areas, right? And now is it a thing to do? Exactly. So what could the Chamber of Commerce do to help promote that outdoor adventures, promote being out in nature often, how to promote our business in general. I was saying nature and then I was saying three different names. Okay? Is everybody clear on the expectations of this a little bit better? Okay, we're going to go and learn about some of the other things we can do in a presentation. When you are in a Google presentation, you guys can pick a theme right away. What is wrong with doing one of the themes that comes from Google right here? So Ms. Dorr is going to pick this one. What is wrong with this, Zoe? They're the same on every side. So if I click to do a new slide, You'll notice that every new slide I get, unless I want to change it, and this is where a lot of you don't know, if I just keep clicking next, it's going to be the same. If you come right over here, so go ahead and pick a layout. I want you to just pick any layout from Google that you want. It does not need to match Ms. Dort. Do You have 10 seconds to pick one because this is just a demonstration. Eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, one. Okay, everybody right now on your title slide, just call this sample presentation lesson. And then we're going to put project I and the date that is today. So I'm on my first slide, I'm on my title slide. Everybody's first title should be sample presentation lesson. Then the subtitle that's on there should be project guide 12715. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a transition. Right now, I have no slide transition. Any professional presentation we should have something that flows very nicely and has nice transitions. It's not just a slide to a slide to a slide. So when the store was gone presenting, do you guys remember about a month ago when I was gone presenting? My presentation had slides that were transitioned and timed exactly to the presentation. So I didn't even need to be by my computer because if I was talking and practicing my presentation enough, it automatically moved when I was cued. That's how good eventually we would want presentations to be so I don't have to stand right by my computer to hit the next key. Is everybody clear on that? Okay, so when we come here, this slide, the first slide has no transition. And I'm just going to pick that it should fade. And I want it to go medium. Now, if you wanted this same transition to happen throughout all of your slides, no matter how many you had, you have an option right down here that says apply to all slides. I'm going to go ahead and click that so that all my slides will move. So when I go to present, and I'm just going to show you this, it will fade, fade back in, it will fade, fade back in for all of them. Okay, has everybody successfully added transitions for their slide? Okay. You are unique. No walking. Not fighting this game with you today. The next thing is I want you to um, only have your, your first one. So if you added another one, don't just take it off. What I want to show you is we don't use this enough. If we just hit the plus button, it's going to give us a generic basic one, correct? We actually have a lot of slide variety, so if we click on the little arrow down below, and you will see all types of formats come out. What I want you to notice is that this will come in here with different titles, columns, a main point, a fact, all of those different things that we've told you to have are there. Okay? Does everybody understand that? So that is how you do different varieties. So let's go ahead and we're just going to add one for our sake with a title and two columns. I would like you to make the title say all about me. And then in the left text box, I would like you to go ahead and we might have to go to the more button and cl click bullet points. But I want your bullet points to be check boxes. So once again, we have more options and we click on that little arrow down and I'm going to make check boxes. And right now I want you to go ahead and create five statements about yourself. 